Good day everyone. In this pre-recorded video, we'll be discussing to you the point of care testing. What is point of care testing? Point of care testing or POCT is also known as alternate site testing or ancillary bedside or near patient testing. It is a product of the development of small, portable, and often handheld testing devices. It has benefits, especially to the patient. It gives convenience also to the one who is performing the test, and it gives short turnaround time or TAT, meaning it gives out results in a short or minimum period of time. In the operation of POCT devices, it requires quality control, maintenance procedures, and also it has to meet the requirements of CLIA and OSHA. Quality and safety in POCT testing. So there are processes and systems that are in place for testing done at bedside. So these POCT testing are considered as wave tests. So it will not require quality checks in the same level of moderately complex tests done in the clinical laboratory. For the QC, according to the College of American Pathologists, external liquid control can be performed only by the manufacturer's instructions. And some POCT devices have electronic QCs or EQCs that will detect problems with the specimen and have internal checks. At the right, this is an example of a quality control lug or a QC lug for the urinalysis testing done by point of care testing. So as you can see, the results of the different parameters are being recorded. So that's specific gravity, pH, WBC, and so on and so forth. At the right is an example of the recommended bleach wipes for cleaning the POCT instruments. From this slide, I'll be discussing the different tests that can be performed using POCT devices. Don't worry if the terms are new to you, this is just an overview. An in-depth discussion of these tests will be done in your third year subjects. So let's start. First, we have the coagulation monitoring. This is used to evaluate patient warfarin and heparin therapy. The tests are the proton bin time, PT, and international normalized ratio, or the INR, activated partial thromboplastin time, or APTT, activated clotting time, or ACT, and plated function. So the POCT instruments that are capable of doing these tests are the Cascade POCT for ACT, APTT, and PTINR, Quagucheck XS Plus for PTINR, ISTAT for ACT and PTINR, and Verify Now for platelet function. Next is the activated clotting time. This analyzes the activity of intrinsic coagulation factors and is used to monitor heparin therapy. Heparin is a drug that is given to patients whose blood easily clots. Next is the proton bin time, INR. So this test monitors warfarin therapy or cumadin therapy. So how do we get INR or international normalized ratio? So we will have to use the formula INR is equal to protrombin time result of the patient divided by protrombin time normal value times ISI. ISI means International Sensitivity Index. This is found in the manufacturer's reagent. Next is the activated partial thromboplastin time or the APTT. This test will screen bleeding disorders prior to surgery, clotting disorders, clotting factor deficiencies, especially the extrinsic factors, and monitor low-dose heparin therapy. Next is the platelet function test. This will determine the patient's response to medication, 
before open heart surgery or cardiac catheterization. This will prevent excessive bleeding or blood clots. Next is the bleeding time. This is the time required for blood to stop flowing from a standardized puncture on the inner surface of the forearm. This will detect platelet function disorders and capillary integrity problems. This is an obsolete test and is prone to sources of error. A POCT device for this is the Surgicut. The next group of tests are the arterial blood gases and electrolytes. These are panel of tests that are ordered during emergency situations because of the critical balance in which the analytes must be maintained. So these are the arterial blood gases test parameters that are measured by POCT. We have the pH, partial pressure of carbon dioxide, oxygen saturation, and the partial pressure of oxygen. So first we have here pH or the potential hydrogen. This will measure the acidity or alkalinity of a solution and will indicate the metabolic and respiratory status of the human body. The normal range is 7.35 to 7.45. Next is the PCO2 or the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. So this will measure the pressure exerted by the dissolved carbon dioxide in the plasma and is proportional to the pressure of the carbon dioxide in the alveoli. This will facilitate the gas exchange. So an abnormal increase of this parameter would involve hypoventilation while abnormal decrease would involve hyperventilation. Next is the partial pressure of oxygen. This will measure the pressure exerted by the dissolved oxygen in the blood plasma and indicates the ability of the lungs to diffuse oxygen through the alveoli into the blood. This test is used to evaluate the effectiveness of the oxygen therapy. Next is the oxygen saturation. This will measure the percentage of hemoglobin binding sites occupied by oxygen in the bloodstream. This indicates oxygenation status of the human body. The normal value is around 98% and below 90% will indicate hypoxemia and cyanosis. For electrolyte testing, we have series of parameters. We have the anions, sodium, potassium, and ionized calcium. Now for the anions, we have chloride and bicarbonate. Sodium is the most plentiful electrolyte in the blood. It plays a major role in maintaining osmotic pressure and acid-base balance and in transmitting nerve impulses. Hyponatremia is the term for low sodium levels, while hypernatremia is the term for high sodium levels. Next is potassium. Potassium plays a major role in nerve conduction, muscle function, acid-base balance, and osmotic pressure. High potassium levels is called hyperkalemia, while low potassium levels is called hypokalemia. Next is chloride. Chloride is responsible for maintaining cellular integrity by influencing osmotic pressure and both acid-base and water balance. Next is bicarbonate. Bicarbonate plays a role in transporting carbon dioxide to the lungs and in regulating blood pH. And lastly, we have the ionized calcium. This comprises 45% of the calcium in the blood. It has critical functions such as muscular contraction, cardiac function, transmission of nerve impulses, and blood clotting. Multiple test panel monitoring by point of care testing. This will measure multiple test panels of commonly ordered STAT tests such as blood, urea, nitrogen, glucose, lactate, hemoglobin, and potassium. The instruments in the emergency room or ICU play an important role at these times because of the immediate test result availability. 
So these are the examples of instruments that have a menu of several different tests. So these are the gem premiere for renal function tests, iStat for blood gases, electrolytes, and others, Novastat profile analyzer, and the ABL80 flex for blood gases. We also have other tests performed by point of care testing. So first we have the cardiac troponin T and I. These are proteins specific to heart muscle. The blood levels of cardiac troponin T begin to rise within 4 hours of the onset of myocardial damage and may stay elevated for up to 14 days. The cardiac troponin I levels will rise within 3 to 6 hours and return to normal in 5 to 10 days. This is tested in acute myocardial infarction. Next, we have the lipid testing. So the parameters are cholesterol, triglyceride, low-density lipoprotein or LDL, and high-density lipoprotein or DHDL. The enzyme alanine transferase or ALT, which is found and produced in the liver, is used for monitoring lipid-lowering medications. Next, we have the B-type natriuretic peptide or the BNP. This is a cardiac hormone produced by the heart in response to ventricular volume expansion and pressure overload. It is the first objective measurement for congestive heart failure. Next, we have the C-reactive protein or the CRP. This is a beta globulin found in the blood that responds to inflammation and can therefore be used as a sensitive though non-specific marker of systemic inflammation. We also have glucose, which, which is one of the most common point of care testing procedures and is most often performed to monitor glucose levels of patients with diabetes mellitus. Next, we have the glycemic index control. So most institutions use a practice of intensive insulin therapy, commonly referred to as tight glycemic control or the TGC. This may involve monitoring a patient's glucose level every half hour and the administration of insulin as required to keep glucose levels in a predetermined range and avoid hyperglycemia. Next, we have the glycosylated hemoglobin. So this is used for monitoring diabetes therapy and was recently accepted as a more accurate predictor than current techniques of a diabetic patient's likelihood of developing complications of the disease. So we have three types of hemoglobin. That's A1A, A1B, and A1C. So A1C here is the glycosylated hemoglobin. The specimen that should be collected for testing glycosylated hemoglobin is the anticoagulated whole blood. Next, we have the hematocrit, which is the packed cell volume. This is a measure of the volume of RBCs in a patient's blood. In testing for microhematocrit using capillary tubes, a POCT device called crit spin can be used as a centrifuge to separate the blood components and to determine the hematocrit levels of the patient. Next, we have hemoglobin. So the measurement of hemoglobin levels is an important part of managing patients with anemia. This is a measure of the volume of RBCs in a patient's blood. So we also have lactate. This is used as a marker of the severity of the condition and the patient's stress response. The disorder lactic acidosis is associated with metabolic acidosis. Next is the occult blood in stool using the guayac method. Occult blood, meaning blood hidden in stool. This is important in diagnosing and determining the location of a number of diseases of the digestive tract including gastric ulcer disease and colon cancer. The principle of the Guayac test is the presence of peroxidase activity of the hemoglobin molecule. 
So the patient's diet should be free of meat and vegetable sources of peroxidase. Next is pregnancy testing, which is the most common POCT. So most rapid pregnancy tests detect the presence of human chorionic gonadotropin or HCG, a hormone produced by the placenta that appears in both urine and serum beginning approximately 10 days after conception. So most rapid pregnancy testing is performed on urine. Peak urine levels of HCG occur at approximately 10 weeks of gestation. Next, we have the skin tests. These are performed intradermally or within the skin. Injection of an allergenic substance. This is a substance that causes an immune response. This is to determine whether an individual has come in contact with a specific allergen or antigen and developed antibodies against it. So we have the following examples of skin tests. First, we have the tuberculin or the TB test. This is also called as the PPD test after the purified protein derivative used in it. So this test is used to detect if the patient has tuberculosis. Next, we have the aspergillus test. This detects hypersensitivity to aspergillus, which is a type of mold. Next is the coccidoidomycosis or the cocci test. This is to test for an infectious fungal disease caused by coccidioides imitis. And finally, we have the histoplasmosis or the histo test. This is to test for past or present infection by the fungus histoplasma capsulatum. Next, we have the strep testing. This is used for direct detection of group A streptococci on throat swab specimens. The bacterium group A streptococci causes rheumatic heart fever and glomerulonephritis. And finally, we have the urinalysis tests. So this has three components, the physical, chemical, and microscopic analysis. So POCT is being developed for the chemical testing. So we have reagent test pads that will detect the following parameters, pH, specific gravity, bacteria, blood, bilirubin, glucose, leukocytes, protein, and urobilinogen. And that's all for point-of-care testing. Thank you so much for listening.